weekly ecosystem office hours call. Uh, I am your host, Jinx, and we are, as always, joined by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. Uh, I want to start off today by dropping a link to a tweet in uh, the sidebar chat here. We've had a lot of conversations in the Telegram groups about what's happening with Masari currently uh, and their reporting. Uh, Jack and Zach and Dermot and a few others have uh, have talked about that. They have an ongoing conversation there, and uh, Masari did show up in the forums to talk about that a little bit. So I encourage y'all to take a read through on their responses, add your own feedback, anything along that line that you'd like. I do like the fact that they're uh, engaged with us and and responding. I think appropriately. So you know, uh, kind of the things that you'd want to have from a vendor. Um, starting off today, uh, Zach, any updates from the foundation side? Uh, I guess a couple of them. Um, I guess the, the most, uh, the ledger integration right now, uh, is down and that is across many new apps. They did an update and, um, they've just dropped the ledger integration from many, many stores. Apparently we're working with them to, uh, get it back in the store. So if you are having any ledger issues, please um, open a help a help request in our help desk here in Discord, uh, and we'll add you to the list of people what, that we're updating. I don't think it affects a large group of people. Most um, most people are using a hot wallet, and it is only specifically for your pocket, um, not wrap pocket. So there's that. I'm trying to think what else. I don't know if there's anything other than um, if anybody has a socket here. We're trying to incorporate people that are building on sockets into the builders call that's happening tomorrow. So we'd love for you to join us tomorrow just so we can have a little more cross pollination. seems like a lot of things are happening as we get closer to the Shannon launch and really just want to make sure everybody's aware so that way we're not um, doing a lot of redundant work here. So uh, that is pretty much it. Beautiful. You want to drop the uh, invite link to the builder call in the chat here. So uh, anyone who's in this yeah, call right interested now. can go ahead and hit uh, interested on the event. Pretty sure it'll display yeah. maybe the same way. Yep, and it's always in the events, the top. Um, now that we can do recurring events, uh, yep. it's always in the top left events in the Discord channels. So, Great. that's it. Fred, Gabby, uh, any updates on the growth side that y'all want to share? Uh, no major ones. Um, we did launch AVAX and Optimism Archival on Monday. Uh, but beyond that, I think that's what we've got to cover this week. Beautiful. Got Radix uh, launched as well. I'm a big fan. Okay, well, in that case, we got a wide open call. Uh, Floor's open. Who's got a topic, question, suggestion, complaint, something to show? Uh, I do actually have another one. So... We are getting closer to launching the new governance. I'm sure you've seen a lot of it in the forums, but uh, I'm looking for people who are willing to to help out test some of the functionality of it. Um, so if anybody is available, um, please drop me a DM or drop a note in the chat here. It's not a lot. It's just like going through the functionality and being like, hey, this works or this is hot garbage. You should change it. Um, so it's a good opportunity to help um, Yeah, kind of steer the direction of what we're using with governance. And just like a big reminder, the, the whole point of this is to make it easier for people to have a vote. I know right now the process is uh, really long and yeah, it, it's not friendly for most people who are coming into the ecosystem. Um, and if you do have any questions, I'll drop a, a link to the, the forum post on that. But yeah, DM me if anybody's available to help me test some of this stuff. I'd really appreciate it. You got it. What's, uh, what would be involved in the testing? Honestly, it's probably like a half an hour of just going through the flow and letting me know what is not working or doesn't make sense. I'm a little deep in it at this point, so um, I just basically need like alpha testers. Okay, well, I'd probably mess with that. You're on the hook. <laughs> Other uh, thoughts, topics, questions, etc. It's wide open. There's uh, no limitation on subject matter, so feel free to jump in with whatever. Uh, 
Well, Jinx, maybe I can flip it back to you. What do you have going on or what's coming up in the next couple of weeks that um, we can help with or you think is exciting? Well, I mean, fundamentally, the the watching uh, the the evolution of the marketplace uh, uh, as we start to move into the bull market has certainly been exciting. Uh, but keeping the message out there, I think, is probably one of the most important things. Uh, the the Pocto community has done a great job of that with uh, being out there in the tweets and sharing and boosting anything that uh, we see of of, in, of importance. Uh, very, very much encourage everyone who is active on social to stay on top of those things. Uh, and uh, stay tuned uh, both this week and next for some uh, some ongoing news and announcements that I think will be of relevant interest to the community at large. Uh, waiting on some uh, updates to be able to go ahead with that. But I believe starting on Friday, we'll have some some things to chew on with the community. Maybe I can ask a general question to the group then. Um, you know, we've talked about Pocket being more than just like Web3 and including your post that you had to Masari, you know, it, it should be bigger than just getting information from the blockchains, right? Yeah. And so do you have any ideas on, you know, obviously we've talked about AI and, uh, you know, data libraries, like what what would it take for someone like a storage or an Arweave or a Filecoin or somewhere there to like use Pocket um, for something like that? Like, how do we start breaking into that? that well, I mean, if, if we're talking about getting outside of Web3, then it's going to be, I mean, storage <laughs> is like core Web3. That's that's part of my basic stack. Um, I, I think there are a ton of use cases that we haven't even started with. Michael's uh, post was a great one talking about, um, you know, node runners running LLMs. Uh, but if you look at every place in traditional uh, IT and, and Web2 where RPCs are used, any of those places could potentially be a use case for Pocket Network, uh, assuming that uh, there was the ability to you know, run a, an associated connecting node. Um, one of the places that I think we should be looking at hard is, is payments. Uh, there are literally trillions of payment transactions every day, and the vast majority of global banking systems are using some sort of RPC transmission uh, for a lot of that data going around. The scale of that particular uh, marketplace is is just massive. Uh, Web3 is fairly small compared to traditional usage of, of APIs and such. And I think Radix is a good example with it just being a, you know, a, a RESTful API transaction that these nodes, as long as we have an associated connection point, um, there's there's not really much that we can't support, or or if we can't now, that we can build out to support. Michael talked about basically any public open database being an option there. I, I think that, you know, those are the directions that we should look. So. I guess the next question there is like, we can look, but is there, you know, there's nobody at PNF, like Dermot probably moonlights is this, but um, like, we don't have a true business development role. Is there anybody at Grove or in the community? Like, how do, how do we start making these things happen um, and not be reliant just on like the foundation to do that? Uh, one one thing I will say uh, is I, I, I tend to see a lot of projects in the marketplace, um, you know, be, uh, really at, you know, really on top of trying to get, um, business development, um, kind of partnerships and things of that nature. Most of them don't actually fully flush out to something material, mostly because the tech isn't available for it yet. So with something like Shannon coming up, um, that's opening the door to so much, uh, new potential. And I think that those partnerships will actually come once it's launched. And then on top of that, once it's been proven. Um, and so I, I wouldn't, so in terms of a strategy for PNF, I don't know if right now is necessarily the time to try to make partnerships with other industries prior to Shannon. I think once Shannon is launched, once, uh, once we've really done a good job with showing Pocket's potential in the RPC 
uh, blockchain data space. I think that in itself will open the door to then expanding. I don't know if right now or even in the near future is you know the 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 time to try to get pocket into new uh, into new areas. At least from my perspective, once Shannon's launched, that then and, and it's been proven and tested uh, in a market that we're already competent with. That then starts opening to the door to uh, to new areas. Plus, right now, until Shannon exists, there is no way to onload or to to onboard. That's the word. Right now, there's no way to onboard other data uh, types anyways, because our entire economic uh, system is built around, uh, you know, having to run 15, um, 15 sources of data in order to make network average. Um, and so trying to introduce new data sets into that kind of economic environment just is not feasible. So there's a number of changes that would have to happen on Pocket in general before uh before we'd be able to go to these new data uh kind of areas and what you have to understand is when you're going to these new data areas you want the people running those uh that are already running access to that data to come to pocket right now we're an ecosystem where you basically have to be in pocket uh to to properly monetize within pocket because you have to have all these expertise in all these other areas um, once we get to a point to where the economics make sense, to where, as we, Ben Van, you know, famously uh, talked about uh, a few, or basically like last month, I believe, um, once we get to the point that we can have experts in other areas come to pocket and make meaningful rewards because the economics are structured uh, in a way that makes that possible, um, that's where we can expand really into other areas. We can't expand into other areas right now because everything has to go through our providers. So bringing in a new ecosystem means that then all of our providers would need to run everything themselves because there's no incentive for people outside of pocket to run any of the data itself because the economics aren't structured in that way. So anyways, all that to say, there's a few elements here that Shannon will address um, that are first going to be required for truly getting into other areas of data. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree on that front, but also this is tech, right? There's a long lead time on some of this stuff. So answering these questions now, you know, sort of puts together what our strategy is over the next three to six months, right? As soon as there's a Shannon test net up, we can start, you know, figuring out what all we can do with it based on the structure of that. Uh, and that's that provides a lot of opportunity to, to you know, hit the ground running when the Shannon mainnet's actually live. I know that like for the uh, liquid staking that we've been talking about, it's we're going to want to be able to to play with that well in advance of when Shannon goes live because we'd like to, that product to go live at the same time, you know? Yeah, totally understand. So in terms of where PNF, I feel because at least Zach's question was where can PNF play a role is incentivizing all, you know, focusing on all these areas that are required before bringing new people on board. I don't think PNF needs to focus on trying to make partnerships inside of industries now, but we can't even onboard uh, properly yet, uh, just because of the nature of how the protocol is right now. So after Shannon and after these other elements have been addressed, then absolutely um, that, you know, PNF will likely be in a prime position to bring in a lot more partnerships to industries outside of blockchain rpc um yeah and so. they're supporting products in the space as well right because i mean it's I, I saw somebody in in one of the threads had suggested that uh you know pocket would make for uh, our pocket the pocket community could uh create a very popular wallet that was capable of uh you know reading all of the supported chains but also like you know, providing additional um, privacy and, and uh, you know, a, a singular connection. There were a number of other features that they thought would be useful in that. I think, like, that's a great idea, right? And, and we've talked in the past about the fact that we have all this data flowing through the network, uh, but nobody's using it for, uh, you know, major use case analytics, uh, uh, snapshots of the marketplace at large, uh, you know, co comparative uh, uh, metrics of how much, 
um, data is going uh, uh, through, you know, networks compare one compared to the other or things along that line. And not like pocket scan, which has, you know, sort of all the pocket related data. Um, but, you know, deep dives into Ethereum traffic and, and Polygon traffic, et cetera. Um, I think, you know, Zach had started that off with, you know, how can can the foundation be involved with, like, sort of business development? I, I think that's a um, that's kind of a tough question, right? Because uh, the role of the foundation is sometimes ephemeral in, in the ecosystem it's hard to tell uh where the the borders of it stop and start depending on the topic um and i wouldn't expect the foundation themselves to be doing like sales for the protocol right like uh, that's that's something that we expect the gateways themselves to be doing um but when it comes to like new product development i think that's that's a big opportunity there yeah, and I think you nailed it because that's exactly what gateways are going to enable is they enable then people with all these specialty ways of, uh, you know, accessing uh, or they're wanting to create specialty ways to access blockchain data, right? Or have extra uh, features on top of the raw data itself, utilize the data in, in ways that, you know, meet a market niche. That's that's absolutely what gateways in the protocol side are meant to address. Um, so that's why I think in, in terms of, from a business standpoint, the best thing that PNF can do is, uh, you know, continue supporting gateway innovations. Any thoughts on that, Zach? No, I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I appreciate the context from both of you. And it's, it's my original question is probably just more of like, yeah, you're, we're talking about chicken before an egg thing, right? Like, do we get these things in place before we can do it or do we prove it and then get them in? And I just, I don't know if, um, I don't know if, yeah, which one makes sense because I don't do business development, I guess, is that is like, do you put them all in place so that way we're ready to hit the ground running or not? And I'd really love to hear from you all too. Like maybe the question is like, what, what things do we put in place even now before we can get, before we can prove it? Like maybe I can take a step back here, Shane, and just say like, you see a lot of stuff happening in this space where the partnerships happen. Um, they get people excited and then the work happens afterwards. And you also see the opposite, which is we've made a partnership, but it doesn't actually mean anything because I mean, for example, our weave and met meta was like, what a big, what a big partnership that never did anything. Um, and so I'm, I'm literally thinking out loud here. It's just kind of the idea of if we want to get in a place where we can start onboarding people that are doing things like, um, you know, AI related stuff. Like I think mid journey would be such a great opportunity for pocket in some way. Um, but how, how do you start getting those things in place? That way when Shannon launches, we can, we can start doing bounties or building out that, that functionality. So that's kind of where my head's at. Yeah, and I I think your head is exactly where it should be because what what prepares for that and and it is the tech side because uh, doing even something like mid journey absolutely that that you know any any of that makes absolute sense uh, to operate on pocket but you know the the most important thing is to have the ecosystem there that is able to absorb that use case yeah. uh, because I have been part of pocket in the early days of trying to de develop some of these early partnerships when we didn't have the tech available and what that ends up doing is doing a lot more uh harm than good because you're trying because you're you're making these promises you're making these announcements you're making all this stuff around a uh, tech that hasn't matured yet and a lot of times what happens is the relationship that starts really exciting and really strong with a partner starts to fizzle after they have to yeah. wait, they have to wait, they have to wait. And so from my own personal experience in the business development space within uh, both within multiple different projects uh, in the crypto space, you it's just it's very hard to maintain any kind of partnership or relationship if they're waiting on the tech. Uh, it just yeah. is. So I would much rather always lean towards 
having the tech, being able to go to them, and being able to have an exact plan on how they can integrate right now and use that, you know, use that connection, that new relationship, uh, that synergy to actually get them onboarded. Because if it's a, hey, let's make this announcement now and then wait, uh, at least, I, I mean, I can't think of one instance within my experience where that has produced something positive. Um, and when we went back to them, they were excited to then start using us. Because uh, mm -hmm. most of the time that waiting sours a lot of their initial excitement. Um, so that's at least my two cents. Yeah. So the so Change focusing on the tech itself is by far, I'd say, the, the best thing to set up the ecosystem for those kind of partnerships in the future. Is having testnet ready something where we could start exploring that so you can start yeah. building the, the use case? Because, I mean, to me, that's what I think that's what you're saying, right, Jinx? Is like once that's up, we should be putting some sockets or experiments towards like what does it take to build out um, these use cases and start like putting one of the on things I think we're really missing here is like a pocket labs, you know? Um, because there are so many things that, that we've been talking about that just nobody has the ability to do any R and D with right now. Node runners are, are busy keeping up, you know, their, their own businesses and, and trying to stay up to date with nodes and all the rest of that. Um, that's, you know, this is, this is something where, and, and I'll give one great example. Um, the foundation rolled out W pocket, right? Awesome. We've got this ability now to bridge uh, native pocket over to W pocket and vice versa, which opens up a lot of opportunities for uh, various EVM applications with with pocket as the base economy. We've been talking about building uh, liquid staking using NFTs and accumulating pocket yield back to NFT uh, wallets using W pocket. Um, that's going to involve some fairly hefty EVM automation across both sides of of the the bridge but nobody right now is building out sdks that have uh uh bridging apis uh, built in for instance you know like nobody is is working on uh any of the core uh uh code base that would be required for a bunch of this stuff so you know what will end up happening is we'll have to try and build this stuff out ourselves and we're not incentivized to then share that with the rest of the community when we've had to spend private funds to build that out, you know? So if you have uh, a DAO funded pocket lab that's working on these sorts of things, then that becomes a, a, you know, code implementation that can be used across the community at large. And I think there is a ton possible in the EVM space that nobody's doing anything with right now. Is that because this, the value, like, in my mind, sockets were created before I was here. In my mind, the sockets are supposed to be places for this, right? Like, hey, I'm going to experiment with this. I'm going to try building something. In in your opinion, is it because the sockets aren't high enough valued or if they don't have enough, like, structure around them? Like, why wouldn't somebody just start doing this and open a socket? I mean, it's, you know, it, if you're going to have an effective lab setup, it needs to be like the labs that are run by other foundations, which is the lab itself is the socket, quote unquote. And you've got a, an administrator oh. who is technically minded, who is ma project managing these things and distributing uh, um, funding as as required. Okay, well, that sounds like a great idea. And if anybody's inspired by that, we should talk more about it. Yeah, and I want to basically reinforce from my experience what Jinx is saying, because, uh, you know, if you want someone to really innovate on a particular area, uh, it a lot of times takes more than what a socket would enable, right? Um, if someone's really going to be serious about changing, uh, you know, changing some of these uh, economic opportunities within side the Ethereum ecosystem to incorporate pocket uh, with new staking mechanisms or yield generating mechanisms uh, or bridging, what have you, th that, you know, trying to do that just on the side is very, very hard. And that's what these labs allow is they typically allow, you know, someone to come in and, you know, work heavily on a project and like 3000 a month at the max of a socket doesn't really enable that. Um, and you really can't have that, you really can't have this 
optimistic approach to labs where anyone can come in and just start getting paid to build because with a lab as jinx was saying you need to have a project manager or someone who understands tech and understands value uh to make determinations on you know what are going to be the the bets that are going to either come to full fruition or at least start momentum going in a certain area uh that is beneficial beneficial to the ecosystem so uh, so it can't operate like a socket. Uh, just to kind of reiterate, I think it is very much more what Jinx was saying. Yeah, I mean, if you yeah. look at how, like, uh, Harry, uh, uh, H5Law or H10Law, depending on uh, which environment he's in, uh, how he started getting involved in the ecosystem, right? It, it was part of this sort of open contract kind of thing, not necessarily mm-hmm. something quite so specific and constrained as a, a pop or a socket, right? Um, that was when we had bounties up. And one of the things we talked about was having a series of ongoing bounties for um, development on the protocol um, to to try and expand that out, to bring you know more energy uh, into that. Um, but when the, the, the problem with, with uh, pops and sockets, I think, is that they they are so specific in, in general um, that you you can't really do a moonshot type environment with them, right? You can't have an X Labs or a, a moonshot group um, because they have to be narrowly tailored to a specific uh, use case within the ecosystem. Um, if we set out some broad use cases, like for example, um, build cross bridge APIs uh, between W Pocket and Pocket, that's that's a very wide open kind of request, right? And then there's a repo for that, and anyone can start checking in stuff to a repo. You know, that I think that's going to be a little more effective at at building some of this this more innovative and and experimental stuff. I mean, an example is like what we're wanting to do with. Uh... Uh, a gateway framework to do a gateway framework you know that that with what we've done with community chains that that's way more than a uh you know what a socket would require um we build community chains uh full time for you know six plus months um to to be able to accomplish the things we wanted to accomplish with it and so taking something like a gateway framework yeah it does require a lot of attention and that's where something like a gateway labs that was or or sorry not a gateway labs uh that's where something like a uh pocket you know labs kind of scenario um yeah you could have these kind of bigger bet projects that are focused on uh you know real significant innovation inside the space um, be powered through these, uh, yeah, through through something like a pocket labs, or really also just be powered through PNF um, or the DAO. It, it doesn't have to be through pocket labs, but some of these larger innovations that open the door to more industries or open the door to uh, more economic opportunity, what have you, are much more likely going to be large projects um, that are tackling something truly different or innovative in the Web three space. Um, and a socket just wouldn't necessarily cover that in that same way. Yeah, understood. I, I get the I get the point here, and um, yeah, it's like a really interesting thing to think about as far as like what could a pocket labs enable, and then what does that mean as far as um, PNF's role versus a labs role? And, and I'm spitballing here, so don't nobody quote me on this, but it might be really interesting to bring some like you know, the technical expertise living in the labs, which is responsible for, like you're saying, bridging other um, bridging other blockchains or other networks or other people versus um, the PNF role of like really fostering the DAO. Yeah, it's a, it's a really cool thing to think about. So I would, I would be really excited if people had ideas, if they wanted to reach out or um, chat about it in, in a channel here in Discord and maybe see like, how did we, how do we set the framework to kick something like this off? Um, we have a lot of really talented people in the community that would be really awesome, like initial stewards of something like a lab or more if they wanted it. Yeah. And, and, and also, you know, finding somebody who was interested in, in being sort of the architect of that kind of thing, because we would need to establish some high level goals and, and high level uh, sort of domains uh, within that to, to focus on for work. Like, you know, what, what areas would be most effective 
I'm I'm telling you right now, for me, it's that that cross bridge API structure that would be super helpful to us. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm certainly willing to be part of that conversation. Maybe it's something we should start a thread on in the forum as well, so we've got you know everything in one place. Hmm. Any other thoughts me, on that? James, sure. I'll take that away as like a, like, let me talk to the foundation in our call and just kind of get some feedback on that too, because um, it seems like that's, yeah, it, it seems like that would be a really good initial thing. So if you want to kick off a, a forum post or I can, um, but just to get some buy-in and other people thinking about what it could look like, it might be cool to have an outline of, of what that would be. And I also want to just voice here that, um, having someone like the protocol team at Grove right now, like getting their buy-in on something like this would be really important. So I don't want to, I don't want to go down a thought experiment and then have, you know, like Olshansky or the protocol team be like, Hey, this is a bad idea or we're already planning to do something. So I just want to, I want to make sure I'm, I'm tapping all the right, um, stakeholders before we go down this route and get people excited. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I'm happy to kick off a forum thread so that we have a, you know, a singular place to, to kind of chat about it, uh, as opposed to the, the fast moving nature of the live chats. Um, and we can, you know, start pulling in some principles there and, and y'all can chew on it internally. Yeah, that would be awesome. Do you, do you mind kicking off that thread and then, um, I can weigh in on it early next week? Yeah, I'll do that uh, after this call. Cool. Thank you. One of my, one of my thoughts is I, I, I don't really know. I guess what I'd be curious is like what the the difference is between kind of how PNF has currently been doing things, where they kind of fund some larger, uh, you know, larger innovative um, uh, initiatives through POPs, where they kind of signal, hey, this is a, uh, you know, this is something the community needs or, or we want to focus on. Who wants to, you know, participate? So there's already a number of things that PNF is done that is very similar to, to something like a, a labs um i think yeah i i you know the the only difference or and where i'd be curious where where it's different uh would be kind of how uh decisions are made in terms of what to focus on in the in the ecosystem um you know because like when when we get a pop or something like that uh you know, I'm not entirely, I'm not aware of who, whose decision really is this or was this, who's kind of really like leading this, who's the technical side behind it or something like that. And I think that's where something like an established labs with like kind of an established team where there's an established framework to where, you know, when a decision was made, you know, what all went into that, you know, who was, uh, you know, what parts of the community was a, was a part of that decision making uh, and that it's reflective of a vision that a lot of people agree with. So that's the only area where I'm not entirely sure, uh, or I, I would say better for me to frame it like this. I think that's kind of the, the main difference between what a labs would function like versus how PNF is currently functioned. Yeah. I mean, in my mind, it, it comes down to like we've we've had a number of contributors along the last few years um, who have added some some pretty significant tooling along the way. I mean, I remember when we were first uh, um, trying to figure out how to run a node. Um, ben Van's uh, Rocket Script was like the first piece of tooling we found that that like would let you see data and stats in your <laughs> node uh, in in some meaningful way. You know, um, and, and I don't think that we've ever had. Like MakerDAO is pretty good about um, having sort of a centrally managed library of contributions, right? And and I don't think that we have that at all uh, uh, within our ecosystem. So uh, anything that kind of moves us in that direction, whether it's a moonshots type lab or not, really just fundamentally having some way to both coordinate and uh, uh, you know maintain a library of useful code. Uh, for for use within our ecosystem, I, I think that'd be important. But cool, I'll definitely start a thread off on it. Any other thoughts on that, or any other topics here?
I will throw in a reminder to uh, tag your favorite Twitter influencer and tell them to talk the hell about Pocket, because that's always good for us. Okay, well, we are coming up on the top of the hour, more or less. Uh, if nobody else has any topics they want to cover, uh, we can certainly call it a little early. I'll give another minute or so to see if anybody has any questions. All right. Well, in that case, thanks, everybody. Appreciate y'all joining every week. And we'll see y'all next week. Same time, same channel. And uh, if you're a builder, make sure you're on the builder call tomorrow. Thanks, Jinx. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, y'all.